unstable now, that's what the experts say. They say a meltdown's possible, but it's safe enough to stay. Well, this kind of stability ain't safe enough for me. I'm gonna pack up all I can and move my family. No new blues, no new blues, no new news, no new news, no new blues, no new blues, no new news, no new news, it's time to choose, refuse to lose. So it's my pleasure now to introduce a, a, uh, prominent Berkeley citizen, an icon you might say, my friend Joanna Macy, who I think is known to you all. Come on up, Joanna. Joanna is an echo philosopher, a scholar of Buddhism, general systems theory, and deep ecology, a respected voice in the movements for peace, justice, and ecology. She interweaves her scholarship with five decades of activism, and she has been actively advocating for the elimination of nuclear power since the early 1970s. Please welcome Joanna Macy. We just got a lot of information about why the Berkeley City Council should vote to decommission these two reactors of ours. Uh, it is a beautiful moment of choice. Actually, from the point of view of eco-philosophers and systems thinkers and Buddhist teachers, choice is what the thing that makes us human. It's where you find out who you are. It's at that moment when you say yes or no, when you ignite your will for something and choose where you're going to stand. And this is a beautiful moment of choice right now facing this council. And it's a choice that we who are gathered here, you guys, oh, over and over again, you come out to see that this poison fire can be stopped being made. So we, um, so the choice that's facing us now is whether we can no longer be hostage to earthquakes, earthquake faults, human error, technological breakdown that, for, that could contaminate this beautiful state of ours for thousands of years and our bodies, and our children's bodies, and our brother-sister species. This is the choice that if it isn't made tonight here at the City Council, we are going to be seeing that it's made again and again. And it is being made across the country and around the world. But what can happen now that point of choice is so vivid for us because tragically we have seen what it started, how it began, and how it unfolds for the last 15 months in Fukushima. We have seen through the reports and we are hanging breathless while wondering that rickety fuel storage, spent fuel rods, up there open to the elements in a containment that could fall with an earthquake igniting we have uh, we have also discovered something else in this time in addition to seeing what it can do to a, a rich and noble intelligent and highly organized country of Japan, we have seen what nuclear power can do to our own government. We are not being told about the fallout, the radioactivity, 
and our water and our milk and our air and you know that it's falling on us and those readings have been stopped and we are not receiving health advisories that is the job of our government to tell us how we can protect our children our families this is a moral lapse a degradation of our own leaders that can tie directly to what happens when you get in bed with nuclear power. But we're wising up. And as we stand here tonight, I want to just evoke for you who you're in solidarity with across the planet. Just east of here, a few thousand miles, there is a shut it downers around Vermont Yankee. And just in that way, in that, those, those dowdy New Englanders and the town are sh determined to shut down Pilgrim, which like uh, Diablo Canyon is a uh, Fukushima lookalike with its Mark I uh, GE reactor. And nine towns around there have voted for the decommissioning. And let's just move a little bit farther on around the planet. Let's go over to Finland. Do you know that they're turning out in masses of them at a blockade camp at the reactor of Okilioti in Finland? They want to close it down. And down, head down a little bit to the south, and you know what's there on the southern tip of India. 7,000 people, villagers determined that the reactor of Kudan Kulam will not go online. And they are being arrested, and they are being starved out. And those coming now, they're not discouraged by the police brutality and they have offered up their voter ID cards saying, oh, listen to this, saying, we surrender our, f we have surrendered our freedom and democratic rights at the altar of a few hundred megawatts of destructive nuclear power and no more. Yes. And come around the planet and you're with your brothers and sisters in Jeju Island on the tip of uh, South, South Korea. And they've begun already the blasting of the rock that's going to be bringing in uh, nuclear laden sh ships just 100 miles, most provocative action from the Chinese mainland. And then a little bit farther on, there we are. There we are with the people of Fukushima with our Japanese brothers and sisters feeling so many of them trapped and they are not giving up and they are calling on us to feel one with them and we do and it makes me think of a great Japanese figure somewhat mythical the Bodhisattva Kshitigarbha also called Jizo well, when the Buddha was worrying about whether there'd be a Dharma around for the future generations, future generations, thousands of years in the future, that Bodhisattva, a little guy, a monk, interestingly enough, a hermaphroditic monk, but in the scriptures, and Jesus made a great vow. And he says, I vow that the generations of the future will not be without the Dharma. I will vow that I will be there for them. And so we can make it this beautiful choice make, and I think we're making that choice. We are going to hang in there for the sake of the future ones. We will not be remembered. We don't want to be remembered as that generation that poisoned this planet 
for all generations to come. No, we won't.